Hello. We're in the season of Advent. That means that we're thinking about Jesus coming into the world as a baby for the first time. And secondly, of Jesus coming back again because he's coming with a second coming later on. We know that there's a lot of different interpretations of scripture about this event, but the central theme of Jesus' teaching about his second coming is this. Are we ready? That should occupy our thinking and behaviour. But back to Christmas. One of the things that I like doing is imagining the back stories behind the Bible stories that we're so familiar with. People are affected in various ways that the plain bald facts often belie. Imagining them, imagining them can often reveal truths, make them more understandable and allow the Holy Spirit to enlarge our appreciation of those facts. For example, if Joseph was originally from Bethlehem, there's a good chance that he had relatives there, which makes his being turned away all the more poignant. With Mary's story about her pregnancy and the angel just too much for those relatives to swallow, it's worth a thought. Well, here's a backstory written from the perspective of an employee at the inn on the night of Jesus' birth. I've called it a different perspective. I looked down and saw that the baby was crying. Well, why wouldn't it, being born in a place like this? I ask you, a hollowed out cave cut into the hillside under a house, a place for the cattle and other animals to be kept in, smelly, damp, full of signs of neglect, and a cradle, <laughs> a cradle? It's an animal feeding trough. Admittedly lined with fresh straw, but a trough nonetheless. While the mother was recovering from the birth, wrapped in a shawl, and being attended to by the innkeeper's wife. The husband's looking a little bemused by everything, still reeling from the rejection of his relatives. He was sure that one of them would have put him and his wife up overnight. But their abandonment to the streets, when Mary was about to deliver the baby, was cruel in the extreme all because she was, in their eyes, having a baby out of wedlock. The couple keeps saying, but didn't the angel say that everything would be okay? Where is he then when we need him? I don't know what they're talking about, angels. As if this was not enough, there was the issue of all those shepherds turning up, with tales of hosts of angels telling them to come here. At least they brought warm milk with them. And even more bizarre, the rumour that some foreign dignitaries are en route. Although they probably won't arrive for some days yet, but where we'll put them, I just don't know. What do they want? Where are they from? What have they to do with the birth of this baby? I have to say that this has been one of the most unusual days of my life. I've only worked here in this pub, come in for a few weeks. Most of the time it's straightforward. Cooking, cleaning, serving, practical jobs, that sort of thing. Working with the owner and his family. They're a very kind couple. That's why they took this young couple in. This census has brought in loads of business. The boss even gave me a little bonus last week because we've been so busy. But tonight takes the cake. A baby, born here, in a stable. They somehow knew that it was going to be a boy. Marvellous what doctors can tell you these days. I suppose it was one of them that told them. They already know his name. He's called Jesus, son of Joseph. But there's something very special about this one. If I were you, I would keep an eye and a listening ear open about him. I wouldn't be surprised if he became known throughout all Bethlehem. And who knows, he may even be known as far off as Jerusalem. I don't know what for, but he's definitely special. Well, my break is over. It's back to work for me. Uh oh, there's the front door again, somebody knocking. Who can it be this time? 
Nothing would surprise me after today. Well, bless my soul, it's blokes on camels. Now that's not a sight you see around here every day. Here we go again, best voice on. Can I help you? And it's no good you calling me my good man while your camel's doing that. I just cleaned that doorstep. Merry Christmas. Oh,